Welcome to She Coaches Coaches. I'm your host, Candy Motzak, and I'm going to help you find the clarity, confidence, and courage to become the coach that you are meant to be. If you're a new coach, or if you've always wanted to be a life coach, then this is the place for you. We're going to talk all about mindset and strategies and how to, because step by step only works when you have the clarity, courage, and confidence to take action. Let's get started. Hi, friends, and welcome to She Coaches Coaches. I've got another special episode here for you today, and I got to tell you, I love doing these interviews, and I especially love interviewing some of my amazing clients. Today, I'm speaking with Melissa Moran. She is one of my wonderful clients, and I am so thankful and grateful to be able to work with people like her, people that I love. And I just truthfully feel so blessed to watch her growth. And it is such an exciting time. So Melissa is a life coach for performers. And she does a bunch of other stuff too in her life. And we're going to talk about that today. Her bio says, gain confidence, conquer goals, and smash life challenges. Say bye-bye to mom guilt. And I invited her to come on this episode because she is a rule breaker. You know that thing where adults are supposed to have one career that they dedicate years to perfecting? You know how we're supposed to put away all those hopes and dreams and desires and focus? Because that's what responsible adults do. Well, Melissa has smashed that rule. She's created a successful career doing voiceover, audiobook narration, and on-camera acting. Plus, she's got a YouTube channel, and it's all about a different passion that she has in her life. She's a mom and a wife, and oh, guess what? She's also recently added life coach to that mix. So we're going to talk about multi-passionate and rules and about what adults are actually allowed to do to create the life that they want. Now, before we dive in, let me read you her official bio. It says, after a 20-year career in radio and winning both a CMA and an ACM award, Melissa decided to pursue a thriving career in audiobook narration and voiceover. She's performed over 285 books now available and on Audible, and there's more on the way. She's also an on-camera actress and has appeared in regional and national commercials, TV, and short films. She lives in Central Florida with her husband, Pavel, eight-year-old son, Maxim, and two dogs, Noni, Nani, and Tyler. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. So it sounds pretty impressive, right? Oh, and did I tell you that she is an all-around kind, caring, and thoughtful woman? And that's why I wanted to share her with you. Hey, Melissa, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you very much. Wow, you made me sound so impressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is the cast done now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's very sweet, kind of generous of you. Oh, you're most welcome. You know, it's, um, we've been working together for a few months now. And I don't know, I just, I love our calls. I love the chance to chat with you. And you've always got, I don't know, something just so kind and yeah, just kind and sweet about you. So let me talk a bit about why I think this is such an interesting thing. You and I have talked about this a little bit over time, but it's your career path. It's so different. And it's, I want to know about the career path that led you here to this place. Yes. So um, as you said, I started in radio. I had a very successful, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, career for 20 years. Um, and that's a very volatile industry. Um, constantly hire, fire, um, you're, you're up and down the uh, country. I can't tell you how many times I've moved. And there just came a point where I had my then four-year-old Maxim and I had been doing audiobook narration kind of on the side. And it was then that I decided 
you know what? I don't think I want to live that life anymore. Up, up until that point, I had a pretty, as radio goes, uh, secure, quote unquote, uh, radio job, but it just wasn't the lifestyle for me anymore. And I found a lot of pleasure in audiobook narration. Um, sometimes I caught myself and I'll hear others say, God, I wish I could just get paid to read all day. <laughs> how, how amazing would that be? And that's what I actually do. So it's pretty cool. Um, and so when I started that career and I entered the big scary world of self-employment, it opened up, I think, you know, you use the analogy of it opened up the faucet to other uh, things that I could be doing that I had always wanted to do, but never had the time because I had this career in radio. And I thought, what if I, what if I did on-camera stuff? You know, I had a history in acting and, um, but I never really pursued it seriously. And then I thought, why don't I just try that? <laughs> and I did. And I found some success in that. And um, so time goes on and the pandemic hit. And as, as of this recording, still lingering. <laughs> um, but I realized how much I missed and craved, as we all do, the human connection and how important that is. Uh, for our own sanity. Um, and I had always loved the world of self-improvement. And uh, I, I look up to a lot of people who do this for a living. I started to listen to your podcast and fell in love with you, Candy. And I was like, you know what? This life coaching thing might be something I'm into. And the more I looked into it, the more I realized, wow, this this is a whole universe I had never even thought of, much like audiobook narration. Let's give it a shot. And I love it. I love this. So there's this theme that has sort of, as you've described this, it's the what if, like, what if this is possible for me? And let's try. You know, it sounds like you would find something that looked like fun, decide it's worth a shot, but also not um, sort of strangle the joy out of it. Like it's doing something that is enjoyable, but then not becoming like overly, I don't know, um, perfectionist or um, like obsessed with it. It's like, let's try it and see what happens. Is that, does that sound right? That sounds exactly right. And I think the issue with radio and goodness gracious, I, I feel almost spoiled <laughs> by saying I, I had such a wonderful career doing that, that why would I leave something like that? You know, I, I interviewed fun people. I went to concerts. I won some cool awards. Like who would leave that? But there just came a point where it stopped being fun. And, you know, I did the morning show. So I, I would wake up at 3 30 in the morning and I had a four-year-old and those thing, things did not you know go together um so it just got to the point where it became more of uh, an anxiety thing it just didn't fit into my lifestyle um so I thought you know what I have this other thing going on it's becoming um bigger than I thought it would so let's give it a shot so once that thing stopped being fun and interesting I pursued the next thing that was fun and interesting. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, you know, like when we talk about this, and I know I did an episode on this a while ago, but this idea that our emotions are actually the heart of everything that we do in our life. So if you choose to design your life, I mean, I know that it's not always easy. I know that you work hard, that you, you know, have also put in the time to perfect your skills and you're dedicated, but there's this thing about if I use my feelings as a guidepost for when it's time to add something new or to move something to the back burner or to retire something entirely, you know, the feelings that I heard you talk about are inspired and fun, like 
what do you think about that as using that as our guidepost instead of what um, title we have in our career or what degree we might have touched on, you know? Yeah, I think that's exactly it. Um, and, you know, you and I have talked about this. It's the struggle I felt with balancing, well, who who does that? Who just floats to, to, from one thing to another because it stopped being fun? Like, who are you? You know, I, I'm not going to say my age, but I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> um, on, on paper, I am very much an adult. I have a kid. I have a husband. I have a house. I have like responsibilities. Um, so how, how dare I? Um, take, you know, this, this career that had longevity and plenty of life left in it and stop that because it was, you know, it wasn't fun anymore. Um, but really that's, that's the key to, to joy. And I think it's very, very attainable for people if they just followed their instinct and intuition and, um, yeah, it's it's hard though. I say it like it's easy, and it's not. I mean, it. I I marinated over this decision for probably a good year before I took the leap because it is scary. I mean, you go from having a job that has a four hundred one k, good insurance, a steady paycheck to not that. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, that's frightening. I just want to interject here because it's. It's like fun is the word that we used. And I think that there's something more here too. And I'm, I'm not quite sure if I can get my finger on it, but we're not talking about fun, like as in flitting, you know, like that we're not like fun, like a butterfly that flits around aimlessly and lands on a flower and then goes somewhere else and then flies off. It's not that kind of fun. There is a component here of fun and joy, but you've also got it combined with commitment and decisiveness. And we don't often use those words together. And I don't really know what that emotion word would be, but it's not just like fun on the playground because you're still there enjoying yourself when maybe you scraped your knees and you got to dust yourself off and try again or try a new approach. And so I don't want people to think that it's just like, um, you know, fun, like there's no commitment because that's not at all what I see here. And having spoken with you over the you know past few months, especially that's, that's this place that we kind of wrestle with, like what is fun and Maybe it's the word joy. You know, there's a bit more kind of heft to that word than maybe just playing on the, the playground as a five-year-old. What do you think? Is there a different word or is there a different quality that we've not talked about? Um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot to that. I think fun can be misinterpreted. Um, and again, I, I think that's why it, it feels, you know what, it's, it's, I think at the end of the day, it's whatever feeds your soul. And if it's something that, look, even audiobook narration is not like this amazing, joyous, rapturous event. Um, you know, you, you get in the booth and you it takes you like three hours to narrate one finished hour. Like it's, it feels like a slog some days, but I think you have to find the thing that even on the bad days or the tedious days, you still find that it feeds something in you. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think the thing with radio was, it wasn't feeding me anymore. I, I didn't feel playful in it uh while doing it so that's the key yeah does that make sense it does it does because there's when we when we try something new it can be amusing like we're not talking about that kind of fun not just the amusing fun but this soul satisfying piece and 
I've got something that I jotted down here. Um, and when I think about your career, and I was, I was just thinking about this before we got on the um, call here, it reminds me of a tapestry and not just one of these smooth kind of tapestries where, you know, they weave every thread that's the same width and color and sheen, but it's like fiber art. Um, where you have all different kinds of threads. You've got the very common um, strengthening threads. I can't remember if they're called the warp or the woof, but anyway, they're the upright ones. And those might be very plain and even, but then it's what we use to create that tapestry or create that piece of art. Sometimes it's it's shiny and um, you know silk-like and smooth, and other times it might have um, a slub in it. It might be more uh, like a textured wool or something, or maybe you add different colors. And that's what your career reminds me of. So you're still an adult who has all the adult responsibilities. You've got a family. You've got dogs, you've got your regular life, but, and that's the warp or the woof. I can never remember, like I said, <laughs> but then as you're weaving, you're not weaving with, you know, only cotton of this particular weight, you might add some silk, you might add some, you know, um, freshly dyed wool, you might add some kind of an interesting texture. And I think that that's the piece that reminds me of how you created your career. And I wrote down these words, and I don't know if I've missed any. Um, and the reason that I wanted to kind of talk more about this is that so many people that are listening to this episode, they may have done that life on as expected. You, you know, get a good job with good pay, get the title, have the benefits, and then they realize that it wasn't satisfying anymore and they're kind of stuck. And so talking this through might find a new thread for them in the tapestry for their life. So here's the words that describe it. So definitely fun and play and creativity and expression and decisiveness and commitment and determination. Are there any other words that I could add to this? Do you think? Inspiration. Mm, yeah. You know, um, yeah. I, I think you got it. That's why I love you. I, you, you know what, just, <laughs> you got this on your own candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're creating your own life and it's so different, right? And I just want to give hope to those people that are like, oh, I'm always going to be, uh, you know, who, who knows what. I'm always going to be a marketing manager or a property manager, but I want something different and I don't know what it is. And so when, you know, you and I talk, they can hear how somebody else made a different turn in their life and how it's just turned out so amazing, right? So now you're yeah. adding life coaching to this tapestry. And I know that you're still new, but tell me, what's the, what's the quality that coaching you will bring to your life and to the life of the people that you work with? I think it's just the, the connection um, the collaborative nature of life coaching is so exciting. Um, and to think that you could uh, potentially help someone find their voice or some something they're passionate about that they kind of maybe put on the back burner, it's it's a wonderful thing. I, I love everything about life coaching. Like I said, I, I found a lot of um, and still find a lot of value in what we talk about and it's helped me so much. So to think that I could be doing the same thing for someone else, that's pretty amazing. I think about you and I think about another creative soul who is out there looking for permission to move their life in a different direction. You're a role model for them. What kind of a role model are you becoming? Well, I think that, um, you know, it's all about possibility and what you can be capable of. You know, it just begins with one thought. You know, if, if you find um, inspiration in something and you think, hmm, maybe I could do that, 
you maybe could, <laughs> and it's very possible that you could. And um, that's the thing. It all started with a thought. Um, when I was in radio and I started doing audiobook narration, I thought, is it possible for me to be successful in that? I went and I did it. You have to take the the fear out of it and add in curiosity. If you just are curious about the possibility of things and you explore it, and the more you explore it, you're inspired to try it. And the more you try it, you become more confident in it. Then it can blossom into something incredible that was completely unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I love this and what I, the place that I think that you exemplify role model is you have the question, like you get that inkling, like, Ooh, that could be cool. And -hmm. then you don't brush it away. You kind of look at it and think that it could be possible, not just not, not me. Like you entertain yeah. that possibility and then you decide to try it. So those two steps, like we all get these inspired ideas and so many people go to shut themselves down when they get that idea. They don't even give themselves the thought that it's possible. And I think that's the place where I see you as a real role model for people is to be open, be curious. Like you said, curiosity is key, but then you decide and then you start and then you keep going. Right. Like, so I think that that's huge. Hmm. I love that. That is huge. Yeah. It's, it's all, I think there's a lot of joy in the exploration. Um, I like to play this little game with myself or this little exercise. I take out my notebook, my my handy treasure notebook that we've talked about. And I write the words, what if on top. And so when I think about, um, you know, what if I wanted to, <laughs> I don't know, take a motorcycle riding, which I did and it ended horribly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Like, I remember watching the movie Kill Bill and I fell in love with Uma Thurman on her motorcycle <laughs> and I was like, oh, I could do that. And it ended up with me with a rod in my leg. So anyway, long story short. Um, but, okay, let me change that. Um, what, no, I love that. If- I love that. I mean, it's too bad that you ended up with, you know, something that needed to be healed, but it's not like every, th- every thought you have all of a sudden magically with fairy dust turns into something amazing. You, sometimes it doesn't work and that's okay too. Exactly. Right? And that's, you know, I, I wanted to explore it. I tried it. I failed and that's fine. <laughs> so, le- lessons learned. I, you know, I, there's something to be said about failure um, because you, even if you're failing, but you still, I mean, that's a bad example, but even if you're failing, but you still find joy in it, like what's wrong with that? Yeah. Right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. I mean, I love to draw. Um, am I the best at it? No, but I find a lot of pleasure out of it. And Hey, you know, there are lots of artists who've made pretty good livings and they're quote unquote, not the traditionally a great artist, but uh, there's, there's a lot of inspiration in their work and a lot of passion and that's, you know, that's everything. Oh, that's so, so cool. Anyway. Yeah. But, oh, but wow. anyway, so I write what if on top of the page what and if. then I just write a list of, of the possibilities. What if I pursued this? What if I'm successful? What if, um, someone wants to buy one of my pieces of artwork? What if, you know, it, you're just, opening yourself up to the to the to the universe of possibilities and imagine if it came true what if what if your what if came true yeah exactly so that's it that's perfect now you know anybody who's listening to this you guys just rewind like not even five minutes and listen to this piece again you've got the step-by-step about what to do grab a notebook write what if at the top of it write down a whole bunch of ideas and then decide one that you want to try. 
and then go for it. Give it a try and stick with it. Like you try it once and you fail. Eh. So for adults, role models, you've got possibility and then you've got commitment, you've got decision, and then you just get started. This has been so great. I'm so pleased that we had this chance to have a conversation. Before we wrap up, how would somebody find you? How can they get a hold of you if they're looking for a life coach that's got all of your capabilities? Oh, um, they can go to my website, melissacoaches.com. You can find me on Instagram by the same name, melissacoaches or melissacoaches1 at gmail.com. So um, if you want to do a discovery session, I would love to chat with you. And yeah, let's play. Cool. All right. (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I hope you liked this conversation and I hope it got your curiosity and your inspiration going too. If this resonated with you, check out Melissa on Instagram or at her website or send her an email and find a way that you guys can have a conversation. In the meantime, I am so thankful that you're here. I really value your time and I appreciate that you guys put your earbuds in and you listen to these conversations. Always, you can send me a note. You can just click through to the episode notes and you're going to see there's a place to send me a note with ideas that you might have that you'd like to talk about or you'd like to learn about. And Melissa, thank you again so much for joining me today. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks again for listening today. Please hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Also, I would love to hear from you. Did something that I say resonate? What else would you like to learn about? Click the link in the player and leave a comment on the post. This is going to give me great ideas for future episodes so I can help you best. Join me again next week for more coaching, support, and teaching to help you become the confident coach you are meant to be.